Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited to talk to today's guest. But before we get too involved, too deep, right? Because let me tell you something. This is going to be deep. Um, I want to introduce my, my, co- my, my co-host. Because you know him, you love him. Sigma baby. Scott Todd. From ScottTodd.net. Landmodo.com. And if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Um, anything else we should, we should plug, Scott, before we get started with our interview? No, but we just had a nice update to Posting Domination. Actually had a live class to announce it. So it is Craigslist and all of that stuff is evolving like we knew it would. And we are keeping it updated. So if you're not doing it, you're missing out. You're missing out on the good stuff. Speaking of good stuff, Land Investing Flight School is here. Enrollment. It's, it's, it's going to be big, Mark. Like, I know. It's people are ready to take off. No, no. We, we finally figured it out. Like, these how-to courses don't work. It's, you've got to have a mentor. You've got to have accountability. You've got to execute in real time. It's all because there's no knowledge gap anymore. It's an execution gap. We finally figured it out. We finally. Did. I love it. We knew, kind of knew it, but like now we're just skipping straight to the good stuff. All right. Let's talk about today's guest. Because he's going to, he's going to, I mean, I think this is timely, right? Like him being here with us as we're talking about flight school, it's really timely, Mark. Yeah. Jeff Slater from JeffreySlater.com. He, he's basically um, a younger, let's say better looking version of Tony Robbins, right? <laughs> he, is, he is your leadership go-to guy. He helps big time executives get to the next level, right? But more than that, he's not just about the money. He's more about the entire human awakening experience. But I, I don't think I'm even doing it justice. Jeff Slater, how are you? I'm great, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm even taller than Tony Robbins. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm only uh, <laughs> about half his size. But, but really, it's a privilege to be here with you guys. Thanks for the work you guys do. And, and to the people listening, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to sharing some insightful stuff to support people in that, that gap you're talking about and closing that gap. How are you closing it? How, how are you closing? No, um, how are you closing that gap, Jeffrey? Oh, I'm closing the gap for myself is, uh, man, you know, I think earlier you talked about that suck factor. It's just learning about being comfortable with being uncomfortable and continually riding that uncomfortable edge of evolution for myself so that I can, uh, and, but learning to be, find comfort in that. In fact, in fact, I've also found that when I feel comfortable, when I feel comfortable at times, it gets me a little bit uncomfortable. So, uh, you know, the people listening is if, if, we're, if we're too comfortable in our life, maybe it's time for a shift, maybe it's time for some sort of transformation in our life. And yeah. so how I close that gap is I look for what gives me butterflies in my stomach, makes me feel nervous and I do it. It's so funny that you mentioned that. So, but you obviously, you know, something happened in your life where you, where you kind of came to this realization. So kind of let's, let's start with um, young Jeffrey and then how did you, how did you transform into you know, Tony Robbins-esque Jeffrey. Um, uh, well, young Jeffrey was, uh, I used to think that, that when I, when I, when I finally made it in the world, you know, my first, my first, you know, those, they used to race, they race those greyhound dogs, which I'm not really a fan of, but they race those dogs. And then there's this metal rabbit, right? And they chase the metal rabbit. The dogs all chase this metal rabbit. And we, as humans, we look at this this rabbit and, uh, and we, we, we can't believe they're all chasing the rabbit as fast as they do, but it's metal. And, uh, and I used to, when I was earlier in life, I wanted to, I was on the racetrack chasing the metal rabbit and the metal rabbit was here's, you know, make millions of dollars, uh, get a white picket fence, have some nice cars. And that was my metal rabbit. And so I went after it cause I thought that when I finally got that rabbit, I had, I won the race and I'll be somebody. So I went after that and I, and I was one of the few dogs that probably earlier in life that grabbed the metal rabbit and I, and I realized it was metal. 
And uh, I went back to try and tell all the other dogs that it's metal and it's not real and, and everything. And, and they just kind of thought I was crazy at times around that. And, and, then, and then I was like, okay, I guess that's not how it is. So then I, I made another metal rabbit. And uh, thinking it wasn't, you know, success is, it's not a white picket fence. It's not money. It's not that. And, and I was like, maybe it's making a huge difference in the world. You know, maybe that's, that's the next metal rabbit. Maybe I want to go stand on stage with Tony Robbins, Dr. Martini, and Tim Ferriss. And so I toured all around the world, 13 different countries, speaking to millions of people about business and life and having a life by design. And, and then I got off stage of one of these big things with 4,000, 5,000 people got off stage and nothing was different. So I went after two metal rabbits thinking that that was what good fulfillment's going to be. And uh, finally concluded that I'm never going to find anything that's going to make me any happier than I am right now in the moment. And nothing external is ever going to make me any happier than where I am right now. So, um, and that's very uncomfortable to know that we're not going to find any answers outside of ourselves. So the only place it left to go is actually inward. And uh, the more I journey inward into myself, the more I discover that actually it's, uh, it's an endless, endless discovery and it's evolution itself. And we as, a human, we as the human beings in this world, um, to step into our true leadership, we have to find our own leadership within ourselves. I have my path. Everyone here has their own path. And so what I love to do is work with people to find their own leader within themselves beyond the external stuff. So Scott Todd, you, uh, you chased that metal rabbit. You caught it working at okay. that. You were, you were an executive for a, a Fortune 300 company. You caught it. You wrestled it to the ground. You're like, you know what? I'm still a slave. I'm yeah. a comfortable slave, but I'm still a slave. Yeah. Right? Now you're free. And is what, Jeffrey, what Jeffrey's talking about, is it resonating with you personally? Or is this, yeah. too, is this too woo-woo for you? And no, no, no. Your ideals. No, no, no. I think, I think Jeffrey's right. I think that, you know, um, you know look, you, you, you follow the path right? Like you, you follow the path and you, you go down that path. And then, you know, you, when you achieve it, you kind of look around and you're like, okay, well, I just, I just, I just became a vice president. I don't feel different. Like you're excited, right? Yeah. Like you're excited and you're like high-fiving people. And like, you, you know, you, you have the, the support of your family. And it's like, man, I, it's like winning the gold medal, right? Like I did it. And then you realize like, okay, the, the work might be a little bit more challenging. The demands might be a little bit more challenging, but nothing changed, right? Like I didn't change. Yeah. You know, I remember this distinctly. I don't think I've ever shared this story. When I was doing investment banking, um, I made my first $100,000 commission check, which was a tremendous amount of money for me at that time. Yeah. Right? And um, I was going to go out and buy my first home. It was my first, maybe my second home with my wife. You know, my, my wife was pregnant. And so like, we were, we were going to get like this big home. And, and at that time, like, okay, here's our, our down payment money. And I remember distinctly going and looking at myself in the mirror. I swear. And thinking to myself, I must be different now. Do I look different? No, I wasn't any different. And what was interesting is it almost was a sad realization that, you know, I still don't feel like I'm not, I'm enough. Jeffrey, you ever have that feeling? Yeah. And, uh, and I, I feel like that's part of the human experience to have is, is many of us have been programmed to not feel enough. And just that what you're sharing about looking in the mirror, I remember going, you know, I, I have time on my hands to research and, and contemplate things and travel. And one time I was, I woke up in the morning and I had read, I'd read on the internet that if you sleep naked, you feel better. Okay. So I was like, I was like, I'm going to try that because it's healthier. So I, I tried it one night, slept naked, did feel better. Um, and that was pretty cool. Um, if that's a tip right there, there's one. So then I woke up, then I woke up and I, I looked in the mirror and I was, you know, naked and I was standing in front of myself naked, supposedly naked. And I was looking at myself, I was like, oh, I wish I was a little bit stronger, a little more like Tony Robbins, slightly taller, you know, everything else. And, uh, and that's that self-critic inside myself, wishing I was more. And then, then this, the thought came to me, because I'm into this leadership transformation stuff. And, and I was like, am I really naked? You know, this deep thought, we started to get deep, right? Am I really naked? And uh, there I was standing in front of the mirror and I was like, I'm not naked. 
<laughs> but I'm naked. And then it's like, I'm clothed with all this freaking cultural programming. This is what success is. This is what makes you happy, Jeff. This is how to eat. This is how to think. And all these programming that I was actually, that I'm actually clothed with. And then, so I realized I really wasn't naked and me, and, and I haven't been naked my whole life as a human being. Um, and I need to do some serious work on myself to go strip away all this programming of what, what it is to be human and what, and pretty much everything that I was told in life and through the education system and through just normal society is I've found is pretty much wrong and off and doesn't actually give me the direct experience of what it is to actually enjoy my life. So, so my question's always been to go back to the original premise of who we are as human beings. Who are we beyond all this? Because we're not our jobs. I'm not, you know, we're not our, our careers. We're not our companies. We're not any of it. We're not our failures. We're not our successes. Who are we beyond it? And I just started asking really deep questions because when I started to get some answers to those questions, I started to find more, uh, more enjoyment in the little things again. And it's great to make money. It's good to have all that. But man, when you know who, when, when we go back to the depths of who we are and we, we match that with some sort of calling in our life, life gets pretty incredible. Uh, Scott Todd, what are your, what are your thoughts? I, I love it. You know, I, I think that, I think he's onto something, you know, like I think that, uh, I think that you've got to go, you've got to go deeper and you got to, you know, you, you've got to, you got to find that, that piece that's going to accelerate you. It, you do. And, and, you know, I'll tell you, I didn't think I was onto something until I started getting, um, cause I, I take, like, I'll take some people to the jungles and, of, of, and do these crazy adventures and things like that with some people that are worth hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. And we we're sitting around the, in these, with these indigenous medicine men and women in the, um, in their what's called malokas. Um, and we're sitting around and they don't talk about their strategy and their profitability in these places. They're talking about their kids, their families. The conversations are really quite deep and they're about their own relationship to themselves. And so, so people often will poo poo this stuff, but at the top levels of leadership, they're having conversations about consciousness, about their themselves, about themselves as leaders. They're not having, you know, what do I do next conversations? They're having conversations about their relationship to the universe and themselves and their place in this galactic family and who they are as a human being and what it is to be human. And um, I used to kind of be a little bit shy about sharing this stuff, but when I spent time with people that are the people that I used to look up to um, and sitting in these conversations, I've come to realize actually this is how it actually is. This is normal. And uh, successful people, success, and I don't mean success like, like money. I mean, successful people that have their life in, um, in accordance to their own soul's journey, uh, then, and the conversations are, are much deeper and they're more fulfilling. Scott Todd, do you have these woo woo type conversations with your friends? No, no, not at all. Do you Mark? You know, I, I don't, but, um, I do remember being at a party and I was talking to this guy and he's worth probably over $200 million. Right. And instead of kind of approaching him and asking him about business or the economy or what, you know, the typical things that people would ask him, I just came and I just asked him like, so what are your kids into? And he lit up, right? Lit up. And um, we started talking about our children and what they're into. And and it kind of led to all these other things and had like that kind of a deeper connection. Um, I think that that what Jeffrey was saying is, is, is right. Like it's, there's, there's sort of this, this cultural thing here where um, your identity is kind of based on what do you do, right? How many times have you been to a party? Hey, so what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm an insurance agent. I'm right. an entrepreneur. I'm whatever it is. But are, that's not really what you are. And most likely that's not truly your passion in life, right? It's something that you do that's, you know, being, you know, taking care of yourself in this world. But it's not you and it's your identity it's not your yeah. identity yeah right? because what yeah. happens when you lose that job yeah you don't lose you yeah you know it's funny because um mark like you know leading a team if if there's any managers that are listening to this podcast you you probably know this or at least i hope you know it the thing about leading a team is that you know if you really want to motivate people if you really want them to execute for you it's not about like hey uh you know 
where are we on this, pro, you know, where are we on this, you know, project or, you know, what are we doing there? You got to get this done. I mean, you can demand all you want. That's not what's going to motivate people. What's going to motivate people is for them to have a desire to perform for you. And the best way to do that is to build that human connection. And like two, two stories. One, you know, if, if you're looking for something and you, you kind of hit on it, if you're looking for something to talk about, well, look at what's on their desk. Look at what's on their screensavers. Look at what's hanging in their cubicle walls. It's not, you know, a picture of, of what success on this project looks like. It's a picture of their wife, their husband, their kids. And you go to them and you say, hey, tell me about your kids. Now you've formed a, a human connection with them. And they will do, once you have that connection, they will do anything for you. And so I know there's managers out there that, that really want to be you know, strict against, you know, I don't want to know anything about the employee, but that's how you connect with people at a, at a human level. It's not about, uh, it's not about the project or, or what you're working on. It's about the people around them because that's what motivates them. And then the yeah, second, I was, I'm sorry. Ahead, yeah, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that, uh, thank you because it needs to be said, look, after consulting some of these top companies, I, I've just, the days are over where people check their humanness at the door. You want to run companies that are profitable, that have high margins where there's high engagement and high engagement equals profitability. Um, the, your employees, your teams have to not check their humanness at the door. And so we are human beings and we need to relate to each other as human beings. And those managers that relate to people as robots, they're going to become obsolete and they're gone. And the entrepreneurs that do that, the, the, that relate to other people as robots, they're gone. Um, those are obsolete like dinosaurs because where we're going is to an era where where we are in is an era where humans, um, we, check, we don't check our humanness at the door. And this is the leadership of tomorrow. And we're evolving to where the, leader, the leaders, each of us are becoming leaders in our own right. It's almost like the leadership is almost disappearing and we're transcending leadership itself. We're, we're beyond the definition of what, what a leader actually is. And we're leading to each other even um, at deeper and deeper levels, which get higher engagement, higher profitability, and, um, and we retain the people that, are, that we want to retain. Retaining good people is everything when running a company. Well, you know, you know like the, the one thing that separates companies is, is not necessarily, you know, their product or their service because, you know, Mark, Mark even talked about at the beginning of this podcast, you know, like the information gap or the knowledge gap is, is next to nothing. There's no gap. Yeah. But what separates companies and it, I don't care how big of a company you are, is the culture and the people, right? You know, it's the culture and the people that that drive you to do business with the same people over and over and over again. It's not, it's not. I'm not buying stuff from Amazon just because they're they're cheapest anymore. I'm buying stuff from Amazon because I know how they execute and they've built a culture that I want to do business with. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, so I guess the people listening is, I know that they're building teams is, you know, what's the culture of a company? What, um, where, what is it on the walls when they walk in? I was just working with one of the larger companies out here in Australia and, and, I, and the place, and the place was a little bit empty. I said, well, what's the culture? But the guy has a personal culture. And I said, get that culture in your company. Um, and how do we express this on the walls? And when people walk in and the meetings and the offsites, my, um, I grew up just, this is a, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. My, my father um, was a serial entrepreneur and he, he struggled with his first couple of businesses. And then many people probably know the company now. Um, it's called Odesk or Elance is also up merged with Upler. So he's the co-founder of that. And, uh, and now he's no longer there, but look, it's entrepreneurism. And I grew up in Silicon Valley. So this is in my blood. Um, and I have my own company and, and continue to, I just, what I want to share with you is this is having grown up in these entrepreneurial families, um, what I've found is, is, that, is that culture is key for retaining people that are smarter than, than you as a leader. And, uh, and we don't want to be, we want to be surrounded by people that are smarter than us. You know, I'm good at what I do. Other people, other people are good at what they do. And we want to put ourselves together. I live in, in, there's this beautiful beach outside right here. And pretty much if you look it up online, if you, uh, there's the, uh, like Byron Bay, there's dolphins and, and they're, they're always surfing outside. I, I love Byron Bay. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And you know what's interesting is these dolphins are outside and, and the way dolphins lead is there's no ever, uh, one dolphin leads for a while, then another dolphin leads, then another dolphin leads. That's how dolphins lead. And so there's this, 
there's this leadership model between dolphins, which I feel that dolphins might have, they, they're more connected to nature than, and they, we're never going to do a better nature. But the, the, the dolphins lead and then the next dolphin lead for a while. And so really they're just trading. There's no hierarchy inside of it. And, uh, and it's pretty incredible. And so what I've noticed with these companies is the organizations are starting to become a little more flat in a way. Uh, and it's really interesting to watch. I'm not saying that go flat in your organization org chart all of a sudden because that, that's a little fast. But culture and, leader, uh, culture and people becoming the leaders within themselves and they're empowering each other. And that's my experience with it. Something to reconsider. Yeah, it's, that's great. That's cool though also about your dad. I mean, you, you had some good insight. Yeah. It's cool about your dad too. But, but you know what, I'll, I'll share with this. I was flying to Queenstown with my father and there's this one tip he said, because I've learned a lot from him. And one thing is persistence in the end. Persistence in, is key to any driver. Um, to building any sort of company. Persist, 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 persist. Because so if I just take that away, but I asked that, what'd you learn from me? And we're, we're, I was taking him skydiving in Queenstown um, on this leadership summit. And we were on the plane and I said, what'd you learn from me? And he said, son, I, I, built, a, I built companies. So what I did is I built companies and I started with what I want to build a company. And then I tried to have my, I tried to jam my life into my company. And he goes, and that was a mistake. He goes, what I've learned from you, son, is start with what do you want in your life? Where do you want to live? How do you want to live? Who do you want to spend time with? And then build a company around that to support that. And then that builds a culture of enjoyment, a culture of, of fun, a culture of, of innovation. Because now my, now my businesses support my life, where my father, at the time, it was still great, but he, he built a company first and he tried to jam his life into it. Now he's retired, hanging out, and now he, I think he's found his, his own groove again, his own life. But right, Jeff, Jeffrey, what do you say to the guy or the gal? Yeah. Like Procter, I always picked on Procter and Gamble. They're <laughs> Procter and Gamble right now. They're middle management. They're making 250000 a year salary. They've got all the perks. They work 60 hours a week. They don't have a strong relationship with their children because they don't get to see them. They don't have a great relationship with their wife because they're too tired you know, at night to spend any time. Right? Yeah. But they're, they're, they don't know a way out. Right? Um, they're scared, right? Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they've got the mortgage. They've got the private school. They've got the car more. They got the car payment. They've got what looks like a great life. Now, everyone else is enjoying it. Their children are enjoying it for the most part, or it's so it seems. Their wife yeah. so it seems, is enjoying it, even though basically no one has a strong relationship and everyone's kind of pretty miserable with that kind of program for the most part. Maybe not. Right. But I, I kind of hear it a little bit time to time. Like, you know, I'm, I'm working too hard. I make good money, but I don't have any freedom. Right. And my children, are, I don't even see them that much. And next thing you know, it's, it's, it's Monday. What do you say to that person? Oh, first I want to cry for him. It's very sad. Um, it's part of the slaving program that, that I, you know, and, and two hundred fifty thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money, but when you're living in, let's say Silicon Valley, you're just kind of getting started. You're you're, you're making ends meet, and it's unfortunate. Um, so uh, here's what I would say: it depends on who it was, but I'm I'd probably have a very, let's just say the person was open for change. Now, oftentimes they're not, because they're so they have too much at risk, because their whole ecosystem and their identity is built into that particular person. I would say, how much longer, you know, how much more pain, how much, how much more suffering do you want to experience? But the thing is the pain isn't enough yet because it's, it's not, it hasn't really sunk in, but when they're 80 years old and they're sitting there and they look back, maybe that'll be enough. So how much longer do you want to suffer uh, or silently suffer? When is it going to be enough? Um, you know, are you really enjoying your life? And cause one day it, it's all going to end. And when you can face death, um, when you can face death and look it in the eye and go, Hey, someday I'm going to die, which is something we in the Western world never really actually come present to because we avoid it like the plague. Um, but when we can actually go into the, the mere fact that, that the person, if they don't have anything to live for, they have nothing. Sorry. If they don't have anything to die for, there's nothing to live for in general. So I'd ask them, what are you willing to die for? Um, and they might say their family, then are you spending time with their family? How much time do you spend with them? Do you enjoy it? And the answer is probably very minimal. What, what's the impact on you? 
Now, if you're, and then I'd ask him another question. I'd say, what are you, what are you really, really, really afraid of? What are you afraid is true about you that you don't want anyone else to know? And what, what would you lose if you actually left that job that you value? Because there's some part of you that values being in these types of positions. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's people that should be in those jobs because they love it. But if we don't love what we do, then we are wasting away. We are taking up space on this planet. And I know that it's not their fault and they have their reasons is because they got to make ends meet. But life happens at the edge. Life happens, life happens at the edge of what we think is possible. You know, how, how's it, and I'd ask them how their imagination's going. Do they have an imagination or is it killed out of them? Who told them that this is the path? And is it their voice that keeps them going? Or, or is it somebody else's said, this is what actually success is. I'd have them question what they think, what they think perhaps success actually is. And we go back to what true success actually isn't for themselves. I'd probably tell them to take a trip and get outside of, um, get outside the anthill and go somewhere else and spend 10 days alone somewhere or with a couple people in a jungle and see, see, see what happens as, as everything seems to strip away. Um, and when you, and what I find at the core with human beings is when we strip away all that stuff, really human beings, we, we can be quite happy with, um, with a lot less. And then from when you get back to that point, if you want to make money and everything else, it's not coming from lack. It's coming from this is just an expression. And actually, when we make more money, we can channel money in good causes. Money's not the money. Often money is considered the, the root of all evil when really it's not. It, we just need more conscious people with more money. And then I'd actually appreciate the person for, for doing the work they do because they probably are very hard on themselves. What, what a great uh, tweet, tweetable quote there, Scott Todd. We need more conscious people with money. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. We really yeah, do. It's funny because um, what, when you get out, like, I mean, you, you kind of said this, and, you know, when, when I broke free of the corporate job, it, it, was, it was kind of told me. It, they came to me and said, hey, thanks for everything, but we're going to go a different route, and you and 85% of the other people on this team are gone. Uh, mm. it, it, I had, I had seen it coming and I had planned, I had planned and started investing in land and followed Mark's program. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was, I was prepared, you know, like I, I was prepared. However, no matter how much you prepare and you, you, you know, like, okay, things are going to be okay. It, it gets scary. And then, you know, you break free and you realize like, okay, man, I, I did what I wanted to do. Like I achieved what I wanted to achieve. And, then, then you start to look at like, holy cow, I did it. But now you start to feel guilty for other people, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's almost like what you're saying. And, and then you start to realize like you got money here and the money, it's not about the money because Mark, you, you say it all the time too, you can cr- always create more money. It's not about the money. It's about how do you, what do you do with it? And then how do you help people be better because of what you have? Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, donating to your church or donating to just, you know, somebody that you see in need, uh, you can really impact a lot of people's lives just, just with little, little changes in your own. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I, to- I told you guys this was going to be deep. No one, no one believed me at the beginning of the podcast, but Jeff Slater, you're the real deal. Um, but we are, unfortunately at that point in the podcast where I've got to put you on the spot and ask yeah. to give the art of passive uh, income model listeners a tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where they can improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Sure. Write down every area in your life that you lose track of time with. So maybe it's playing music. Maybe it's sitting with your kids Maybe it's sitting by the fire. Maybe it's going to the beach. Maybe it's, um, it's being innovative with your friends and having great conversations or listening to podcasts like this that are interesting and compelling with good people. Or maybe it's investing in land and, and those kinds of things where you like those strategy conversations. Right? Every area in your life that you lose track of time with. And then, and then find a way to spend all of your time in those domains because then you'll be more true to who you are, which is we have no beginning, we have no end, and we are timeless beings which exist outside of the dimension of time. Time is omnidirectional. Everything they've told us, time is the biggest lie in the world. And time doesn't exist. So therefore, 
when we don't exist in time and we do everything according to note that we lose track of time in, we are in flow of our life and flow of our true calling in the world. So make a list, develop that specific list, and then look at the gap between where, how much time you spend in things that you, you are tracking time and that and get, do everything possible, like maybe passive income, get as much income as you can to actually spend as much time as possible in the areas you lose track of time and your life will be magic. Time to get on the boat, Scott Todd. I know you're losing track of time there, man. I got, I got to go now. <laughs> right here, right? Like, man, this is serious. Yeah, yeah I'm, we, I'm we, going we, on a hike right up outside my my house. We got a, we got a beautiful mountain reserve, and I love hiking. That's it, guys. And you know what? The the companies that succeed, they have a balance of this stuff. We're programmed to be so freaking busy all the time. Busyness is not is not achievement. We don't want to take inspired action. And so we got to get do, do more hikes in the middle of the day. Richard Branson spent times walking around his island for a cup for an hour a day or so when he's on Necker. Like just everyone needs to chill out and let the, let the manifestation come to them and action at times. So I love it. You. I love it. So, you know, Scott Todd, this is like the exact opposite of Grant Cardone. It is. It is. Yeah. But that being said, you know, those guys are having fun, right? That they're, they, when they're doing what they're doing, they're losing track of time. And again, you know, I, I know it sounds a little woo woo, but it's not that Jeffrey's anti money or anti success, right? It's just. No, I've, guys, I'm fine with it. Have, a, you know, have it all. It's all good. Get a Ferrari, whatever you want. But yeah, but, it, but if you're not, if you're not happy, if you're not happy, none of it matters. No, it doesn't matter at all. I, look, I've spent time with too many. I've, I've had the money. I've built people with much more money than me. And if they're not happy, it's all worthless. So might as well get that out of the way and find that while you go make a bunch of money and change the world. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I'm so obsessed with death. I think about death all, all day, every day. Like this could be my last moment, which is why yeah. I'm such a foodie. Like, wait, is this going to be my last meal? Like, <laughs> be my last meal, right? Like, what, else, what else is more important in life? What else do you do more than three times a day? Like, this, That's true. I love right? good food. I Thank love you. good Thank food. You. And I'm trying to get Scott Todd to stop eating you know, meat and potatoes and eat some Indian food and he just keeps putting his nose up to it. But that's a whole other podcast is getting Scott Todd to awaken his, his culinary senses. But that's oh, come on, Scott. You, there's always the Devata Korma. There's the, the, the Padan. There's so much good. There's mango chutney. There's so much good Indian food, Scott. Yeah. You, but, just, you just suffer uh, after for a day, but it's worth it. I've had Indian food twice with Mark. So, you know, like, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, the second time was because his son Cole was like, yeah, dad, I want to do this. He yeah. went, it. it was just the two but of them. We got, we got back to our safe, safe house here. And there's no Indian food, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm shipping you some Thai tonight. Anyways, okay. um, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right. You know, you know I'm a, a Mac user and I love this one. It's called getremotely.com. Getremotely.com is an app that you can download onto your Mac and then you also download an app onto your iPhone because if you have a Mac, you have to have an iPhone. It's a rule, I think. And basically it allows you to access your hard drive from your Mac the entire hard drive, not a Dropbox, not one of the file sharing um, apps. It's your entire hard drive. Check it out, Mark. You'll be a fan. I'm, I'm getting That's it right cool. now. Um, I love this. Okay, done and done. You know what? I want to ask Jeffrey one more question before I give my tip of the week, uh, which is going to be go to jeffreyslater.com. I have a link to it. So I'll just plug you one more time, jeffreyslater.com. Um, we'll just call him the short Tony Robbins. Um, <laughs> So it's just really easy to put them in that box, right? <laughs> um, Jeffrey, I have a problem. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it, but I need help with it. And I'd be curious what you, what you would say to me. I have an iPhone addiction where I will obsessively check my email for something good all the time. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't, I should say I can't. It's really hard for me to be present with whomever I'm at if I have this phone near me, okay? I, it's, it's, like, it's like ding, ding, ding. It's like Pavlovian for me. Ding, 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 you got a good one, right? Yeah. Help me, Jeffrey <laughs> Um, Yeah. That's a, it's a very human thing right now um, that's going on. I would ask you, uh, you know, there's times 
there's there's times when that's important. So, I, I, you know, there's a part of you that wants, there's probably a part of you, like every human being that wants to stay on top of things. So I really acknowledge your commitment to wanting to stay on top of things and make sure you're looking after yourself and your family and looking after the people that are calling in. So I think we should just give it some gratitude because it, it's so easy to beat ourselves up for all these things. We're always trying to be better. And so thank you for your commitment to looking, to try, to looking after people and making sure you're on top of things. It's not easy to be on top of everything. And so I tell everybody, you know, let's give ourselves some love. It's easy to beat ourselves up. So good job. Well, thank you. You're, I'm going to tell my wife that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, and then you know, once you acknowledge yourself, you can decide to do something different if you want. And if you don't want to, that's cool too. Because it's a time to check your iPhone. It's time to be on it. And a time not to be. But um, you know when that time is and you know when that time isn't for all of everyone listening because, you know, we as human beings, we do this. So when it's the time not to be, you just then choose not to. And a good exercise I do is when, you, when I, like, I'm going to go to the beach after this and probably go, and I don't bring my iPhone with me. Like, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but most of the time I don't. I leave it. And that's my time away from that thing because that thing can be very distracting from my own soul's journey. And, uh, and, and it's a nice challenge to unplug myself from it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I wasn't even listening. I was no, on I'm your joking. iPhone. No, I'm joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> but now, now you know how my family feels. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I just, I just projected it all onto you, Jeffrey. But thank you. Oh, that's cool. That's what humans do. We're master projectors. And, and you know what? It's a good reminder for me too. To, to stay off that thing and, and, and choose, it, choose when to use it instead of it running me. I can run my iPhone or my own iPhone can run me. Just like money can run us or we can, we can own money or money can own us. And that's a lot about this technology. Technology can own us or we can own it. And we need to go back to owning technology, not it owning us. And that's the next evolution of human beings. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm coming out there, man. I'm coming to... Uh... To get, to get the Byron Bay, uh, what are those wraps called again? Oh, there's so many wraps. They have veggie wraps and everything. They're, they're, they're little, you know, you know, it's I a healthy little town. It's a really healthy town. Um, I love Byron Bay. Uh, tremendous. So learn more about Jeffrey Slater, jeffreyslater.com. Uh, it has a Y in it. It's got this Y in it, S-L-A-Y-T-E-R. S-L-A-Y-T-E-R. Give Scott Todd some love. Go to landmoto.com forward slash wholesale. ScottTodd.net. Postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. And don't forget, give me some love. Go to thelandgeek.com and learn more about land investing flight school. Um, Jeffrey Slater, are we good? Yeah, all good. It's great to meet you guys. And thank you for everyone listening. It's been fun. This is great. Thank you. I have tons of gratitude for you coming on. The only way we're going to get quality of guests like a Jeffrey Slater is if you do me a favor, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Absolutely. Jeffrey Slater, thanks again. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. See ya. Oh, wait, Scott, are we going to do Let Freedom Ring? Next time. Next time. It's so awkward now. I don't even think we should do it anymore. <laughs> it's over. Right. Kill it. Right. We killed it.